So, um, the first thing I want to, want to mention is um, I changed my title slightly, and I changed it about an hour ago because this morning I received an email saying, Yeah, I like the word rejuvenating. It seems like a cool word. Uh, why don't you use it? Well, this one, that's, some guy out of the blue, some guy I've never met before, just, 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 just I don't heard of, just wrote me this email. Uh, um, so, I'd like some feedback on this. Do you like this word? I was quite, I mean, I'm fairly sure I've heard someone use, use this word or read it somewhere before and so on, but I googled it immediately and it was no hit, so it may be genuinely new. So, um, so, so, so what's it about? Alright, so, um, now, I love giving talks to audiences like this. I mean, I, I, I think I literally recognise the faces of about half the audience, which is great, you know, because I know that I'm talking to a sophisticated audience that's familiar with the elements of what I do, so I don't have to give the same bloody chalk that I give about 50 times a year. I can get something slightly more um, useful. Um, but I know that there will be some people here um, in, uh, who, who are not so familiar with my work. So my plan this morning it was something, is, to, um, is to spend perhaps 10 minutes giving an introduction, giving a very brief um, and accelerated introduction to uh, what I do and why, and, well, not really why, just by basically how. Um, and then I'll talk about some more interesting stuff thereafter, some more um, sophisticated stuff. So, um, I'm the Chief Science Officer of this foundation, Sense Foundation. We are a US registered charity, but of course we have um, activities elsewhere. Indeed, we have officially now a, um, a UK based affiliate. So, those are, those, all those billionaires in the audience who pay taxes in the UK or in the European Union can come and see me later. Um, uh, the, um, Stuff we do, obviously, is to work on ageing. We're not in favour of it. We'd like to do something about it. And our focus is on the application of regenerative medicine to the problem of ageing. Um, so for the next, as I say, about 10 minutes, I'm just going to very briefly summarise what that means and why it makes sense. And um, I'm going to start by just mentioning about the um, problem, the nature of the problem, describing the problem. Because this is something that people get wrong a lot. You know, when people are working on really hard problems technologically, they can waste an awful lot of time just by describing the problem suboptimally and, you know, just going around in circles because they haven't really understood quite what they're working on. So it's very, very important to describe the nature of the problem you're working on in a manner that appropriately orients the discussion, the debate, the, um, the, the thought process um, about actually fixing it. And this is particularly important for ageing because it turns out that there are an awful lot of very, very boring and indeed counterproductive ways to define ageing that are perfectly correct factually but are absolutely useless. So this is the definition that I like to promote, I like to um, emphasise, that there is a mechanistic definition of ageing which can help us to work out what to do about it. So on this definition I'm saying two things. First thing I'm saying is, ageing is a side effect of being alive in the first place. So, metabolism is a word that biologists use to encompass all of the molecular and cellular and systemic processes that keep us alive from, you know, from one day to the next, from one year to the next. Pathology is the word that I'm going to use to denote all the things that go wrong late in life. All the diseases of old age that affect older people and hardly ever affect younger adults. Um, and also all the things that we don't call diseases necessarily, but they're obviously bad for us, like, you know, loss of muscle mass, loss of immune function, and so on. So, metabolism causes pathology, eventually. The other thing I'm saying here is, I'm defining this term damage, I'm going to um, use that term very precisely. What I mean by damage is it's the set of intermediates between metabolism and pathology that make the link between the two. The set of things that metabolism causes ongoingly throughout life, even starting before we're born, and that accumulate throughout life. Things that are not automatically repaired by other parts of metabolism. Those things that accumulate, eventually accumulate to a level that gets in the way of metabolism and stops it working so well so you get the pathologies of old age. Why is that a useful definition? It's basically summed up here. It's what I just said, metabolism causing damage causing pathology there. There are two traditional line, schools of thought with regard to what to do about that. Um, how to postpone the pathology of old age. One of them, which I'll call the geriatrics approach, is essentially what medicine today is about when, when applied to the elderly. 
and that is essentially to look at older people and see the pathologies of old age emerging and try to slow down the rate at which they progress. So you end up delaying the age at which those pathologies reach a life-threatening serious state. That's what this flat-headed arrow means, that's a notation taken from the genetic literature, it just means inhibition. So I'm saying here that the geriatric approach tries to slow down this process. The gerontology approach um, says, well, hang on, no, prevention is better than cure, usually, maybe this time too. And that means maybe it would be more effective to intervene earlier in the chain of events to try to in some way clean up metabolism so that it doesn't actually cause this damage quite so rapidly as it naturally would. Um, and of course that will have the same effect, it will slow down the accumulation of damage and therefore delay the, the, the age at which damage reaches a life-threatening state, a pathogenic stage. What's wrong with these two things? Well, you don't have to be a biologist to know this. Lots and lots of things go wrong. It, aging is very chaotic. The pathology of aging involves a lot of different things that are exacerbating each other. It's a real mess. And the worst thing is that prevention really is better than cure. In other words, this is simply intervening too late in the game. The damage that causes these pathologies is continuing to accumulate. And therefore, the geriatrician's job is getting harder and harder as the person the geriatrician is treating is getting older. So really, it's not the way to go. You're going to be able to make a little bit of difference that way, but the geriatrics approach is never going to be much better than nothing. It's going to be a bit better than nothing, but not much. Unfortunately, the gerontology approach isn't a lot better for the moment because the fact is we don't know very much about how metabolism works. This is a simplified diagram of a small subset of what we know about how metabolism does work, and it's bad enough, as you can see, but the real problem is that it's a simplified diagram of a small subset of what we know about how metabolism works, which is completely outweighed, any biologist will tell you, by the astronomical amount that we don't know about how metabolism works, even ignoring the amount that we don't even know that we don't know. So, um, so, so, so basically it's hopeless. The gerontology approach, unlike the geriatric approach, is not completely broken in principle, but it is completely broken in practice for the foreseeable future. We simply are so far away from knowing enough to be able to intervene in something like this in a manner that doesn't do more harm than good, that we might as well forget it for the moment. So the question then is, what's the alternative? And of course the answer is that there is a third way to combat this process, to postpone the pathology of old age. And I historically call it the maintenance approach, sometimes I call it the engineering approach. What it says is, let's leave these two processes alone, let's let damage be created by metabolism, and let's, you know, let's allow damage, once it accumulates to a sufficient abundance, to cause pathology. But, let's not let it get to that abundance, let's go in and periodically repair that damage in various ways, so as to stop it from causing pathology, even though metabolism is still creating that damage. And the reason why I am so much more optimistic about that approach than I am about the other two approaches is because we have a fair idea how to do it. Fact is that damage can be described very simply. It's a lot simpler, it's not simple, but it's a lot simpler than either metabolism or pathology. And the essence of my whole approach to combating aging, which was developed about 10 years ago, um, is that, that all of the various biological phenomena that can qualify as damage by the definition that I'm using, the definition namely the intermediate between metabolism and pathology, um, can be classified into these various categories, these seven categories. Um, which I have written on the left. And that's good news, that's already good news, and of course I have various arguments for why this is... Um, for why this is a comprehensive list, in particular the fact that it's been the same list for a very long time, more than a quarter of a century, since well before I came along. And secondly, um, that if you just look at what we're made of and you ask, well, what structures in the body are long-lived enough for damage to be able to accumulate, then this is the list you get, more or less. But the really good news, of course, is that we actually have some idea how to deal with these things. Um, on the right-hand side, I have the um, things that I think are pretty promising for actually fixing all of these various types of damage. Some of them, the ones at the top, are pretty well advanced. So well advanced that my foundation doesn't even pay them very much attention because a lot of people are paying them attention and doing good work and we wouldn't make much of a difference. 
The ones towards the bottom are much harder, but not ridiculously hard. 